During the Apollo 13 lunar mission, astronauts Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert encounter smooth progress as they depart Earth's orbit. However, a significant setback occurs when an oxygen tank explodes, leading to the cancellation of the planned moon landing. As a result, they become stranded in a damaged spacecraft, located 205,000 miles away from Earth, and must now devise a strategy to safely return home. Four, oh, go. Two, one. If you want to stay in the loop and receive more exciting videos, make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, and don't forget to like the video. The narrative begins on July 20th. 1969, at the residence of astronaut Jim Lovell, portrayed by Tom Hanks. Jim and several other families associated with NASA gather together to witness the historic moonwalk performed by the astronauts of Apollo 11. Later, Jim reflects on his experience of orbiting the moon during Apollo 8 and contemplates the possibility of setting foot on the lunar surface in the future. Meanwhile, his wife Marilyn, played by Kathleen Quinlan, tries to suppress her worries about Jim embarking on another mission. Some months later, Jim receives news that he and his crew have been promoted to the Prime crew for the upcoming Apollo 13 mission due to an ear infection affecting one of the original crew members. Although Marilyn has concerns due to the accelerated schedule and the mission's number being 13, Jim remains confident in their preparedness. Jim collaborates with his crew members Fred Hayes, portrayed by Bill Paxton, and Ken Mattingly, played by Gary Sinise, and the three demonstrate thorough readiness for their mission. Shortly before the launch, Marilyn subtly expresses her reservations about the flight, but Jim assures her that she will miss out on an extraordinary spectacle. Following their conversation, Jim and his crew attend a small press conference where they discuss the various instances where the number 13 is associated with the mission, such as launching at 1,300 hours and 13 minutes and orbiting the moon on April 13th. Jim surprises both the press and the crew by announcing that this will also be his final mission. Days before the mission, the flight surgeon discloses that a member of the backup crew has contracted measles, posing a risk of infection to the primary crew. As Ken Mattingly has not previously had measles, there is a significant chance of him falling ill during the mission. Jim faces a difficult choice either replace Ken with the backup crew member Jack Swigert, portrayed by Kevin Bacon, or postpone the entire Apollo 13 crew to a later mission. Jack receives the news with joy, while Ken is devastated upon hearing it from both Jim and Fred. The crew continues training in the simulator with Swigert, although they harbor some reservations about Jack's piloting abilities compared to Ken's. Nonetheless, Jim assures everyone that they will be prepared for the launch. On the day of the launch, Ken watches from a distance as the rocket takes off, accompanied by Marilyn Lovell and Mary, Fred Hayes's wife, played by Tracy Reiner, who are present at the launch site. The launch is successful, relieving Marilyn and Mary as the Saturn V rocket carrying their husbands successfully enters space. Eventually, the crew successfully accomplishes the task of docking the command module with the LEM Lunar Excursion Module, thanks to Swigert's proficient piloting skills, and the mission proceeds towards the moon. They capture a video from inside the craft. But due to a prevailing belief that moon missions lack excitement, none of the television networks broadcast the transmission. Shortly after the video feed, the crew performs routine maintenance tasks on the ship. Jim Swigert is assigned the task of stirring the oxygen tanks. Suddenly, a loud bang reverberates through the spacecraft, causing it to lose stability. The system buttons illuminate, and the oxygen tanks begin to malfunction. Mission Control, led by Gene Krantz, Ed Harris, swiftly takes action from the ground, attempting to solve the problem. Amidst the chaos, Lovell reports that the service module is leaking oxygen. At the insistence of ECOM member Cy Liebergott, Clint Howard, they consider shutting down the fuel cells to prevent further leakage. However, this decision comes with a trade-off, if the fuel cells are closed, they cannot be reopened, and the moon landing will be aborted. Jim Lovell expresses some apprehension, but the crew ultimately proceeds with the shutdown, only to witness the oxygen level in the command module continue to decline rapidly. 
With only 15 minutes of oxygen left, they initiate an emergency transfer, moving the flight computer's data and the astronauts themselves to the LEM, which serves as a lifeboat. The crew rapidly goes through the three-hour power-up procedure for the LEM, relying on the data stored in the Odyssey's flight computer and assistance from the ground crew at Mission Control to ensure the accuracy of their course calculations. Eventually, the crew finds safety within the LEM, and control is re-established with the Odyssey. Gene Krantz and his team deliberate on the best course of action to bring the astronauts back home. While some propose a direct abort by turning the ship around and heading straight back to Earth using the command module, Gene deems it too risky to ignite its engine, as they are uncertain about the extent of damage caused by the reported explosion. The plan involves utilizing the moon's gravity to slingshot the spacecraft, and upon its return trajectory, they will activate the LEM's engine to guide them back home. The engineers who designed the LEM expressed concerns that their craft was not designed for such a scenario. Nevertheless, Gene insists that it's the only feasible option they have. Meanwhile, Marilyn Lovell endeavors to remain composed and strong for her family. At one point, NASA's media spokesman, Henry Hunt, Xander Berkeley, asks Marilyn if the news stations can set up an antenna on her front lawn. She firmly declines, stating that they can communicate with Jim directly once he returns home. On the spacecraft, the crew ventures into the dark side of the moon, eventually emerging on the illuminated side. Despite Hayes and Swigert's excitement upon seeing their intended landing site below and Jim's contemplation of walking on the moon's surface, Jim reminds them that their primary focus should still be on preparing for their journey back home. During this critical time, Mission Control discovers that there is only 45 hours of power remaining on the spacecraft, which is insufficient for the astronauts to make it back home. However, John Aaron, Loren Dean, corrects this information, emphasizing that they are consuming more power than initially calculated, and it will be completely depleted within 15 hours. John insists that the crew needs to shut down almost all systems, including their navigational computer, and reduce power usage to 12 amps. Gene approves the plan but instructs the team to conduct further research, including simulator sessions, to develop a power-up procedure for re-entry. Ken Mattingly, who had been isolated at home and missed the news about the mission's complications, is called in and immediately begins working in the simulator. Ken believes that by eliminating unnecessary procedures from the checklist, they might be able to bring the astronauts back with the limited power available. He directs the simulator team to replicate the same conditions and equipment as those aboard the Odyssey, dedicating long hours without breaks to devise a procedure. Shortly after, another problem arises when it is discovered that all three men inside the LEM are consuming more oxygen and producing more carbon dioxide than anticipated. Fred Hayes realizes that he made an error in his calculations by only accounting for oxygen reserves for himself and Jim, assuming they would be the only ones using the LEM. The ground team realizes that the LEM filters are circular, while the only other filters on the spacecraft, for the command module, are square. They form a team to create a filtration system using the limited supplies available on board. On the spacecraft, a brief argument ensues when Jack raises concerns about a distant re-entry factor, and Fred suggests that Jack caused the accident by stirring the oxygen tanks. Lovell intervenes, urging them to put aside blame and arguments, emphasizing that it will lead them nowhere. Just as the CO2 saturation light illuminates, indicating a critical issue, Houston contacts the crew, alerting them to the oxygen problem. They swiftly collaborate to assemble the filter designed by the ground team. The procedure proves successful, effectively purifying the air supply inside the ship. When it becomes evident that the crew needs to perform a manual burn to correct their trajectory for Earth re-entry, Jim and the team execute a challenging 30-second burn using rudimentary physics. Since the course computer had to be shut down to conserve battery power, they rely on one of the LEM's windows, keeping Earth aligned in it for navigation. The three astronauts work together to pilot the ship, and the burn is executed successfully. With their trajectory corrected, Jim and the crew eagerly await the completion of the power-up procedure, but they are informed that it is still being finalized. 
However, there is a glimmer of hope when Mission Control mentions that Ken Mattingly is working on the issue. The crew feels the coldness creeping in since the heaters had to be deactivated, and Hayes begins to experience illness and a moderate fever. Ken has optimized his work to the best of his abilities, yet the procedure still exceeds the desired amperage by 4 amps. It is at this point that Ken suggests redirecting some of the surplus power from the Lunar Excursion Module LEM, back into the Command Module. Although there will be some power loss during the transfer, it is found that the available amperage is sufficient to complete the procedure without compromising the system's power. Ken and his colleagues swiftly proceed to Mission Control, bringing along the procedure. Ken assists the exhausted Jack Swigert in powering up the systems, while Jim and Fred add additional weight to the command module pod to compensate for the lack of moon rock samples that were originally planned for. With Ken's guidance, Jack successfully gets the Odyssey systems operational once again. Subsequently, the crew ejects the service module from the spacecraft. As it drifts away, the astronauts observe and comment on the damage, an entire panel of the craft has been blown out, potentially affecting the heat shield of the command module pod, creating a new potential problem as the Odyssey prepares to re-enter Earth's atmosphere, which may expose it to extreme temperatures it cannot withstand. Eventually, the LEM is detached, and the crew gets ready for re-entry. For a brief moment, Jack considers that Jim will pilot the Odyssey himself, but Jim relinquishes control to Jack, explaining that he had only occupied the pilot's seat out of habit. Meanwhile, around the world, numerous individuals anxiously await news of the three men's safe return. Marilyn's friends and relatives gather at her home, watching the news coverage. As the men commence their re-entry, communication is lost, and a countdown of three minutes begins, the average time it takes for astronauts to recover from blackout. However, after three minutes, no communication is received when Ken Mattingly contacts the crew. The time stretches agonizingly to four and a half minutes before suddenly Jim Lovell's voice is heard, accompanied by a video feed showing the capsule with its parachutes deployed. The men are swiftly rescued and brought aboard the USS Iwo Jima, receiving cheers from the numerous crew members. In a voiceover, Jim describes their mission as a successful failure, highlighting their safe return despite not reaching the moon. It is also revealed that the explosion was caused by a damaged coil in the oxygen tank, a minor defect that had been identified two years prior to Lovell assuming the captaincy of the ship.